She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Hey, we're in my kitchen today. Um, and why are we doing this? Well, you know what? One of our um, messaging that we like to bring you is about, yeah, defining success for you. And so I wanted to share today some successful tips in the kitchen. Um, and we're gonna be talking about, yeah, should that be part of your definition of success? In my personal opinion, the answer is yes. You know, I can tell you that um, after being a mom of five and a grandmother of eight and a businesswoman. I've been in business for almost 29 years now, which is a crazy, crazy thought to my head that I've been doing it that long. I raised my kids as well as cooked the food in the house, cleaned the toilets in the house, did the laundry, did the housekeeping, all of that kind of stuff um, throughout my time raising the kids. Now there were times where I did have help. Um, in fact, I had a woman that helped me three days a week um, and uh, she cooked two days a week uh, for the family. And it was nice to just come in and sit down and eat a meal. I got to experience what my husband got to experience every single night of the week. Um, and that was for about a year and a half. And, and that was during a season of a brand new business that was getting started up. And, and I had her work actually 20 hours a week. Um, but majority of the time raising kids, I was the one um, cooking all of the meals and taking care of the household. Um, so what I want to show you today, um, and, and again, how does this factor into success, about defining success for you? Personally, for myself, my friend, defining success for me was that I would be the one that would actually be the homemaker of the home I, at the same time of raising my family, at the same time of building successful multi-million dollar businesses. And so today, I want to show you, because you've heard us talk about this. In fact, improvise and imperfection. Remember, just I can't even remember, a couple of weeks ago, we... Uh, uh, brought a show to you about improvising and imperfection, right? Well, um, I'm going to show you some improvising and perfection right now um, in the kitchen. I'm going to show you a very simple, cheap meal to cook. We're at my house, literally. This is not a set. Um, my daughter in love, Rachel Johnson, is actually filming this, and her and I are going to have a conversation while dinner is actually cooking about some of this women being big bosses and having big companies and really like what's behind the scenes? Are they really happy? You know, there's been a rise of depression in women at the same time as they've been rising in um, uh, climbing the corporate ladder or even starting successful companies is the stress pressing in on them. I have found actually for me personally that doing domestic things actually helps to kind of calm myself right down. Um, and it actually um, is a part of uh, serving my family and, and, and allowing my hands to do something that is almost sort of creative. Um, so let's just get right into this very simple meal that we're gonna make, because it is a simple meal. You don't have to be a gourmet cook. Now, mind you, I do and have fed my family on $100 a week um, for many, many years, uh, about 17 years now that I've put that into practice. Even my kids were little, this included diapers. Um, and so tonight's not gonna be some big gourmet meal, but it's gonna be something really simple that you can pop in the oven that everyone's gonna love. And this is a meal that my family craves and asks for, but I actually change it up just a little bit because I'm gonna improvise an imperfection. So let me show you what happened. So Basically, um, this is a whole chicken, okay? This whole chicken costs $5.69, okay? I have it in a, in a kind of a Ziploc bag, um, our HEB brand. It's my favorite store by far, my most favorite grocery store. So what's in here? Okay, well, um, the other night I made uh, lumpia for our family, which is a Filipino amazing, like, oh, phenomenal, oy, like outrageous. Uh, basically, they're like egg rolls. It has ground turkey and a number of other things. But there's a sauce that we serve the lumpia with. And just so happens, I had a little tiny bit of this sauce left. What was in the sauce? A few simple ingredients. One, soy sauce. Now, this one I love. It's cheap. has no GMOs inside of this soy sauce and it tastes like regular soy sauce. I've used the Aminos, Bragg's Aminos, but it doesn't taste like soy sauce, so it kind of changes some of my recipes. So, I, so I've kind of shied away from Bragg's and I'm now using this one, non-GMO, which means that it doesn't have, you know, cockroach DNA inside of it or whatever. So 
it probably what did I have left it probably was less than a quarter of a cup right and then about I don't know a little bit of apple okay first of all I'm gonna tell you that I'm not a recipe type of person I just like throw stuff together so I want you to get creative in the kitchen too just throwing stuff together okay so some garlic I would say this little bit of left had I don't know to a quarter of a cup I would say let's say four bulbs of garlic is what you can put in there all right so a quarter cup of this maybe four not four bulbs four um what do you call these things rachel oops what is this not a bulb a, this is a bulb this is a clove clove <laughs> <laughs> this is a clove of garlic this is a bulb of garlic so anyway it's probably four or five or six of these cloves these are kind of small the ones that i have were kind of big all right and then um a couple splashes of of um apple cider vinegar or white rice uh, vinegar or white distilled vinegar so any any vinegar besides red wine vinegar I think would work fine so again I, I here hold on I'm gonna show you what this thing is actually in um, let's see how small this is okay so what does it say of course I can't see it doesn't matter so this is about how much sauce I had left uh, is it a half a cup might be a total of a half cup and it, it was about halfway through so i'm going to say if you use a quarter of a cup of soy sauce literally it might be two tablespoons of vinegar and then about four to six depending on how big the bulbs are um, bulbs of garlic all right so i had some of that sauce left over and you know me i'm not going to throw anything away but usually what happens is that when, because i refuse to throw anything away something new gets birth because i will not throw stuff away and why because i follow the, the financial principle of creating wealth and that financial principle is really simple what is that financial principle it is he who can be faithful with the little will be made ruler over much much more so I won't throw away this little bit of sauce even, even though the lupia is all gone I'm gonna use this sauce and repurpose it for something else here's what else I had look inside the back I also had a half of a jalapeno left that's what I had I ha can you smell that Mm, oh my gosh amazing. it smells so good and so literally last night when I saw that I had this little bit left over I just thought to myself okay I had this chicken I knew I was gonna make it today I had this little bit of sauce I thought eh. <laughs> I literally just threw it in there and then I noticed I had a little half of a jalapeno it was a good size jalapeno and I thought huh ah, let's just throw it in there the other thing that I threw in here I gotta uh, rinse off my hands because I have sauce on there by the way, I already washed my hands. Um, the other thing that I decided to throw in there, I thought, you know, I'm gonna make this kind of sweet. I wanna add a little sweet thing to it. Now, my husband and I, for the next 30 days, are not touching any sugar, and we're only drinking water. So that's no coffee, no juices. I don't drink coffee or juice anyway. No wine, no no anything besides water. So no water, no sugar. We're on a 30-day fast, if you will, of, of just water and no sugar. We can eat other foods. Um, but also, on top of this, this meal is going to be what I call a burn-the-fat, feed-the-muscle meal. So it's going to be a high-protein meal. It's going to have um, my macros. I'm, I'm going to use white rice because I'm running a little bit late tonight normally I'd make brown rice so I'm gonna now take four cups of rice sorry I'm making three cups of rice and I'm making extra because right now I'm only cooking for four of us all right uh, it's my dad his sweet um, friend from Oregon and then me and Hans that was three I'm gonna stop at three maybe mm -hmm. I should do four I'm wondering if I should do four uh, I'm gonna go for four so why am I gonna do four oops why would I do four because now what I'm gonna have is extra rice friend I'm gonna have extra rice already prepared and it's gonna taste fabulous and here's why because we're gonna dump first of all the water which this was measured for three cups I need to add more water um, I'm gonna make some extra rice now that's gonna have the chicken flavoring in the rice it's gonna have this marinade that's been sitting overnight in it and so I can now repurpose that rice for something completely different and in fact hold on one second there we go um, in fact the the other thing I'm gonna be able to to put in there um, is I can make a stir-fry with this rice I can serve it as a side dish right it just saves me time for the rest of the week I've got a crazy busy week just like you've got a crazy busy week so this way I'm gonna be able to just keep it really like make a bunch at once and then I will probably get probably um, a total of three meals out of this this combination right here right all right so now I'm gonna take this chicken and all of its juice and all of its marinade 
Oops, <laughs> that was awesome. Oh my gosh. This, I wish you could smell this, friend. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And again, what was this? I don't know, I've never made it before. But literally, it was like, hey, that kind of that kind of smells good. I think that would taste good. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of loosen up the rice in here a little bit. So you just set this chicken right on top of the rice. It's already seasoned. I think I wanna add some pepper, though. No, I'm not gonna add pepper, that was silly. I have jalapenos on it. Generally, I don't put pepper with jalapenos. Um, so anyway, that's it. You see how simple that is? Now, when I make, now again, this is the first time I'm making this version of this, but here's what I can tell you. That, oh, and by the way, I love me some Pampered Chef, okay? Just to let you know. Me and Pampered Chef are fun friends. I've had Pampered Chef in my kitchen for 20 years. I love this stuff. More than 20 years, actually. I started with the garlic press and the onion chopper. Anyway, this is a stone. You don't have to use this. I just happen to have it. I use it for lots of things. You can just use a, a you know, a, a glass dish if you want, you know, a nine by 13 glass dish. Put the rice on the bottom, put your chicken on there, and then bam, all right? So it goes like this. I have the, the oven set and I'm using a convection, convection bake. Sorry, I'm gonna move this closer. I'm gonna stick this sucker in the oven and I'm gonna bake it at 500 degrees at a convection setting for one hour, okay, for one hour. Then I'm gonna turn it down to about 350 and let it keep baking after that, all right? So I'm gonna just like totally sear in all the juices inside of that chicken and it's actually gonna, at that kind of a heat, even help to cook through some of the bone, which are some great nutrients inside of that as well. It's gonna get this rice just, like tasting absolutely phenomenal. I wish you could actually be here for dinner. But listen up, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about women who are working, women who have kids who are working, and how do we make this all happen, and, and, and how, do, how does this all come together and work? How do we produce these amazing meals, which by the way, I'm gonna serve this with some sauteed asparagus. I'm not gonna put um, uh, in the asparagus any garlic or anything. I'm gonna keep it kind of plain with some, some kosher salt and a little bit of pepper, and that's how I'm gonna serve tonight's meal. I forgot to tell you, I added stevia to this sauce. Just a little bit of stevia to kind of give it a little tiny bit of a sweetness, so it's a sweet and savory kind of thing. Not quite a, uh, what do you call it? Not quite a teriyaki sauce, but just a little bit sweet, a little bit of spice. It's gonna be really phenomenal. So anyway, this is Danny Johnson. Yes, you are watching the Danny Johnson Show. We are filming it in my kitchen. I just showed you a really super cheap, amazing, delicious, fabulous meal. Gonna bake this sucker. I'll be posting pictures on Facebook because you're not gonna be able to see it here on this show. All right, all right. We'll continue with more right after this. It's time to take on a whole new mindset. This is The Danny Johnson Show. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider member today and get on the fast track to success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. Did you know you can take The Danny Johnson Show with you wherever you go? It's never been easier to stay up to date with the latest content from Danny with the dannyjohnson.com app. Watch or listen in the car, at the gym, or on the go. Download it now from the App Store and Google Play and never miss a show again. 
your family, business, and bank account will thank you. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson, and the most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities, and they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. Faith, hope, love, and sometimes a good swift kick. You'll find them all here. This is The Danny Johnson Show. So I don't know if you know these stats, but 12 million women every single year are suffering from clinical depression. Isn't that sad? Here on the Danny Johnson Show, by the way, thanks so much for joining us. We're at my house. We're actually cooking in my kitchen. Our first segment that we just did, I just showed you a really simple meal that you can pull together where your family is just gonna go, wow, they just like, wow, I can't believe you just made that. Um, it's a simple meal that I've been making for years, except for I did a little modification. Um, if you missed the first segment, you can get a hold of that first segment on our website, dannyjohnson.com. Um, and I wanna give you a couple more tips about what you can do with that same chicken, using that same one little chicken that's gonna turn in multiple different meals. Um, um, but 12 million women every single year are suffering from clinical depression. That also brings me to the place of saying like how many of them that are unreported, right? So those are just the ones that are actually going to a psychologist who are getting on medication for antidepressants. It's a huge number, in my opinion, a huge number. But at the same time, I'm no stranger to depression. Although I never went and got clinically diagnosed, I can tell you I was suicidal for a lot of years inside of my life from whether it was the early parts of my life, I actually Actually, first time I ever tried to commit suicide, I was six years old. But um, more of uh, depression, which again leads to suicidal thoughts and tendencies, is that it was during a season where I was working over 100 hours a week. And working 100 hours a week um, put me in a depression. And why? I wanted so badly just to be a mom. That's all I ever wanted to be. And yet I was denying myself my dream. Here I had children, but somebody else was raising my children all day, early in the morning to late at night. I never saw them. I would show up sometimes, you know, um, late at night. They'd already already be in bed and leave before they even got up. And or um, on the weekends, like sometimes I'd be working all day Saturday and not even see them on that Saturday. So Sunday was the only day and I'm just exhausted. And what? needing to do some laundry, needing to get some food, you know what I mean? And so just didn't have patience like I should have and didn't have the right mindset that I should have had when they were really super young. Fortunately, the, this did not go on for too long. It went on for about two years, which is a long time, but thank God it wasn't for the entire time that I raised my kids. Um, and then the other part, like let's fast forward about um, several years later where now I was retired from business and I'm home full time and I was in a depression again. like. So meaning that I, I was neglecting my kids and then several years later, uh, actually after I sold my company, I was working just part time and that seemed to be like a really good flow for me. And then I stopped working part time um, and then I was home full time with my kids. And so then when I was full time home now, <laughs> I was depressed all over again. Now part of that had so much to do with my mindset. I, I have to tell you, I was jealous that Hans was being able to build a business and I was being home changing diapers rolling out pasta, making fresh bread and homemade pies, like doing all the domestic thing and all the laundry. I remember just going, gosh, this is like never ending. It never stops. You know, how many pairs of underwear can you fold in a day? You know, I just remember feeling just like I had no value. I felt as a mom at that season of my life that I had no, I wasn't making any kind of contribution that was any bit valuable at all. And I, so I think that women kind of go from these two places, um, from all the women that I've talk to 
is that, and, and maybe you're a man, you're a husband, you're watching this and you don't even realize that your wife is that could be suffering from depression and feeling like she has no value. Whether she's full time at home with the kids, she feels like she has no value. And why? Our culture has completely like destroyed the value of a mom and a wife. Our culture has talked so down on um, a woman who chooses to raise her own children and to be a housewife that she can't get a real job or she's not that smart. That is just such complete bogus. I found it to be so much harder, to be honest with you, to be a mom and juggling everything. And I use crazy amounts of skills to be able to manage a home, to be a wife and to be a mother than I ever did as a business person. And, and so um, I, I think whether you're in that place, whether you're the husband of that wife who's suffering from depression or you are that wife and mother who is either working like crazy hours, 50, 60 hours a week up to 100 plus hours a week like I was, or you're home full time and yet there's something inside of you that is just saying, gosh, there has to be more to life than what I'm living, that I'm just not happy. There's, I'm just not stimulated. I just have no vision. I feel like this is just never ending. I don't feel like it's ever going to get me anywhere. And again, both, both sides of the coin feel that way. Even women who are working more hours than they should be outside of the home, they're also feeling the same way. And why? Because there's still that crazy amount of debt. There's still that pressure. There's still the stress from work. Um, it's a very interesting uh, thing for us to look at. So what I'm going to do in the next segment, because again, we're at my house, we have a chicken cooking in the oven that I'll be serving to my family here in about 50 minutes. Um, you won't be able to be here to eat this amazing meal but maybe you can cook the amazing meal for your family too. But I'm going to have my uh, daughter in love, Rachel Johnson, actually joining me because we're going to see these two different, if you will, generations coming together to talk about this and to see what we can do to help women today find more value in what they're doing. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Be sure to tell a friend about the Danny Johnson show. It just might be the key to the breakthrough they need. Stay right here for more of the Danny Johnson show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. My name is Anders and I'm from Latvia. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was a struggling English teacher back home. I had a language school that I started when I was 21 and uh, had grown it uh, to be pretty okay in my city. But at the same time, I had acquired a debt of $60,000. In a matter of eight to nine months, I got rid of my debt. And by 2011, we had our first million dollar year. This has been amazing. We grew our school from about 100 students to 2,000 students and I can only highly recommend for you to come to the next event and be part of this community and learn the tools that will help you to succeed. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, my family and I were hemorrhaging under the pressures of debt. Since attending First Steps to Success in January of 2014, my family and I have paid off over $147,000 in 19 months. We're completely consumer debt free. We have restored relationships and our business is growing at a rate of 15% at every event. Your next Next step is to sign up for the next First Steps to Success and start creating your own story. My name is Jeff Conyers and prior to First Steps to Success, I was a struggling business owner. I had discovered that my business account went negative 5,000 and uh, I, feel, I realized that I did not have a business plan and I needed to do something. Fast forward to one year after, I have now created, um, just by implementing the tools at First Steps to Success, uh, over $50,000 created in other business, improve my personal and business relationships. Man, it's like the story is forever changing and just it just gets better and better. I don't know about you or what you're going through, but I would highly recommend getting to first success. <laughs> 
Prior to plugging into First Steps of Success, we were drowning under a mountain of debt. We were heading to divorce court. We had failing businesses and toxic relationships. Since plugging into First Steps of Success, our marriage has been restored. We have paid off over $56,000 in 11 months. We've helped our community pay off over $300,000 in 14 months. My business has grown in over 600% in four months. And for the first time, I can say I'm just loving life. I have great relationships. So if you are fine where you are, then this event is not for you. But if you're ready to reach your goal and to change your life, then I highly recommend that you get registered for the next event. Hi, my name is Jill Kearns. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Prior to coming to First Steps to Success, uh, my husband and I were struggling financially and were uh, hurting um, in our relationship a lot. Uh, we needed um, more time together and we just were struggling with that because of the finances. And so uh, since plugging in, we've actually paid off over $280,000 in debt we are completely debt free and more than anything else the look on my husband's face of relief and um, an excitement about where our future lies and the traveling and the fun enjoyable times that we'll get to spend together as a family is totally worth it so if you want to have better relationships with your significant other your children if you have a desire to um, to be completely debt free and released from that bondage for whatever reason, uh, whatever the burdens are, your next step is to get to First Steps to Success right now. So prior to getting started to DannyJohnson.com, I was a college dropout. I was working a, a bottom of the barrel type job. I started plugging into her training. Um, I've skyrocketed through the ranks of corporate America. I've tripled my income in the last five years. Uh, that's all fine and Danny, but it wasn't, uh, there's a part of me that had the part missing. So um, I ended up using Danny's prospecting skills and I ended up meeting the love of my life. Uh, since then, we've paid off $32,000 of debt since October 2014 uh, so get here get here now this is the greatest thing ever you have to see this the, the skills and strategies Danny teaches are unbelievable they totally took someone like me with no education and helped me just like multiply my efforts so you need to be here if you knew you couldn't fail what would you do with your life Discover your own answer. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hey, thanks for joining us on The Danny Johnson Show. We're at our house. This is my daughter in love, Rachel Johnson, married to our mm -hmm. son, Roman. Um, recently, her and I were talking about um, this new trend that seems to be happening about really promoting women um, in the marketplace, which I think has some great things for that. But at the same time, there could be some hidden implications. And so we literally are in my house. We just finished putting dinner in the oven. Uh, the very first segment that we did of this show was teaching you a brand new meal. And again, it was like an improvised and imperfection type of a meal. It's baking. Are you smelling that? Yes. yes it smells so good. Uh, she's like the funnest person to cook for because she always like has an out of body it's experience. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, so, um, so we were just talking about in the last segment about depression, that women that are going through depression and 12 million women who are who are diagnosed um, every year with clinical depression, which doesn't even come close to all the women that are not like like being diagnosed yeah. with that. A lot of women don't go, like right. very few actually go. So I, I can't even imagine what those numbers are. But I had once suffered from depression, not once, but twice. Um, and it was pretty severe, um, very, very severe. And I was at one point a hardworking woman, meaning outside of the home, and another time I was a hardworking woman inside the home. Um, it was going crazy. But one of the things that Rachel kind of brought up um, that I think is an important thing to talk about was this whole thing and these websites that are, did you call it girl boss? Yeah, so yeah. there's, uh, at least I've seen a lot of you know posts on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag, it's just hashtag girl boss or something of that nature basically um, used in the context of um, a woman either having her own business or being a high level person within a company and um you know just either a picture of their desk or their work or their outfit or something like that and it's just interesting to see this you know along with the whole like feminism thing and then this girl boss mm -hmm. and it's just like how because then there's the pressure side of okay so now i have to be in order to be like 
because these photos are beautiful, right? And the women are beautiful, right. and they're, you know, and so it's like, okay, so to be beautiful, and I have to, you know, be amazing in my career and be the top person in my in the company that I work for or mm-hmm. in the organization that I'm part of, whatever. And so um, there's the pressure side of that, and then you know, there's not really the glamour and glitz of. Home. Yeah, cooking a meal for your family or making sure your house is kept clean yeah. and yeah. you know. So my question to you, because you represent that that generation um, that is on Instagram a lot. Yeah. Right. And so all the social media stuff. And so there's all this programming that's actually coming at this generation. So this is why the conversation actually started was because it's like, yeah, like what what's the impact of that? You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're just showing women in this role here, you know, but there's there's another side to her. <laughs> She's perhaps yeah. married. She perhaps has kids. And, and you know, so if we were to, like, peel the curtain back yeah. and see her at home, who is that woman at home? That woman that they are promoting, right, that, yeah. that uh, you know, to be successful in the marketplace, you've got to be the CEO. Okay, well, I've been a CEO of a company for a long time. I've had many companies, um, many, many companies over the last, I started my first business uh, when I was 19 years old. We'll just leave it at that. So that's a long, I'm about to be 49. Okay. So this is crazy. Okay. That makes me want to just throw up right now. But anyway, so, so when, meaning there's both sides to that, there is pressure to that. And what I think is being communicated to your generation right now is exactly what you said. So yeah. you tell me, like, when you see those those photos or you see the girl boss and, mm-hmm. you know, these women CEOs and everything, which, I mean, you've known me for years, right. um, and I sing a bit of a different song. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been a part-time business owner for... Uh, a long, long time. And why? Because my family came first, because it was important for me to raise her husband. (laughs) It was important for me, for them to have chores. That's why we didn't have a full-time housekeeper. Um, It was important for them to learn how to do their own laundry and do dishes and to learn how to cook. It was important for me to make sure that I did not set up my future daughter-in-laws with, you know, a basket case of a man who doesn't know how to do anything for himself, right? Um, And I didn't want to set up a future uh, son-in-laws, because I have two daughters also, that they would have these slobs that, that... you know, didn't know how to do anything, uh, that they were not contributors into the relationship, but they were takers from that, from the relationship. And a lot of parents who have these full-time housekeepers or full-time nannies are raising kids to what? Not know how to take care of anything. And, and they are looking to be served instead of looking to serve. Yeah. And so when, when we started to talk about this whole concept of, of, yeah, you know, I wonder what's behind the curtain, yeah. you know, what, what does their life actually look like at home? Yeah. So when you see this kind of messaging and you're of that, you know, you're 20, Mm -hmm. 22 years old. What is that? What does that messaging say to you? Are you nothing if you're not a high powered businesswoman? Is that, is that kind of some of the feeling? I want you to be honest with me about what that's saying to you. Yeah, no, I honestly, when I see pictures like that with that, with, or with that hashtag or just women talking about how awesome and successful Mm -hmm. they are, Mm -hmm. there's part of me that's like, Oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. Like Mm -hmm. that sounds kind of fun, Mm -hmm. you know, but then at the same time, I, it's kind of like, "Ah!" that's also really intimidating and scary. And like, I, mm, I would rather, you know, be able to cook for my husband, which sounds kind of silly. Like if you're not, you know, if you haven't been around this woman for a while, but I, or raised by my mom, I love cooking for my husband. I love like having a clean home so that when he comes home, he's just like, Oh my gosh. (laughs) Like, and able to relax and unwind. And, um, so I, there's always like the allure, you know, of like, what would that be like? Like to be a hardcore, like 100%, 100 all the time and, you know, in, into career and into climbing the corporate ladder or whatever the saying is. And so there's definitely like the curiosity side to that. But then I'm also, I'm also like, well, why can't, why can't the, you know, home, 
homemaker, t- like more wife type of thing, also be just as right. exciting and just as celebrated as the. Because it takes a lot to be able to do both. So am I hearing you say that most of what you're seeing out there really just puts the women that are getting most of the attention are women who are entrepreneurs or they've climbed the corporate ladder or they are women who have become super successful yeah. and she's got the, you know, the the office in Miami, you know, right. with the white desk and she's wearing that slinky little beautiful thing. and yeah, Right? So exactly. it's that woman that's getting all the glamour, mm-hmm. glorified stuff. Stuff, but the, the or even an entrepreneur like right. just herself right yeah. so that but the women that are not getting mm-hmm. right the, the women that are not having the light shine on them are the ones who have held the fibers of our nation together forever <laughs> right it is the ones who have raised the sons that they marry yeah okay. maybe it's because they don't have the time to go Instagram and Twitter like because they're doing so much you know what I mean I don't know or I don't, I don't know, know if this is a society thing yeah. right because I even think that the feminine the feminist movement is largely about her being a career person. Yeah. Right? So from the beginning of it, of her being a career person. And if you're not a career person, then you are nothing. Which is why I found myself in a depression when I was home full time with my kids. I, I felt like there's not some goal. There's not some measure yeah. today. That's what it was. There was not a measure yeah. of like, do you know what I mean? Because as a business owner, it's like, hey, I got daily measures. I got th- I got things I got to get done today. I have things I have to accomplish today. This this project has to be finished. I need to close this amount of deals today. Yeah. I mean, that that was, you know, there were like daily measures of what I of what showed me that I was succeeding. But when I came home and I was full time with my kids, uh, <laughs> it's like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and maybe if I, I could go back, I could like come up with some daily measures that said, I won today. I did good today. You know, and I guess they're part of it. So I had three loads of laundry to do every single day. So it was oh like, my gosh. Every day, every day, girlfriend, <laughs> every day. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess I could have used things like that as a daily measure. I didn't. It was just more of like, gosh, I'm going to do this again tomorrow. But I think largely because women in general, and I want to know what you think. I want to know whether you are a stay-at-home mom or not, um, whether you feel like our society has so um, crafted this messaging that is really, really selling us a woman who is a successful business entrepreneur or a successful career woman, that she's the one that's really getting all the attention, but the woman who is has decided to maybe be a full-time stay-at-home parent, there's nothing glamorous, there's, no, there's no recognition, there's no, lifting her up. There's no edification of her. There's no highlight of how important that job is. Not like with in the fifties, right? Like there was a time where, wow, there was a finishing school for those women, yeah. you know, on, on even how to be married to a very successful man, that there was a certain uh, way that she carried herself, the way she dressed, the thing, the skill sets that she had to be able to, um, help her husband be who he wanted to be in the marketplace actually so when we come back we're gonna talk a bit more and dig deeper in this because if you're one of those women that you feel like man i would love to be home with my kids but i feel like i would be a failure if i did that um let's talk about that next this is danny johnson we'll continue with more right after this danny will be back with more expert business money and relationship advice to help you live the uncommon life The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First Steps to Success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. So I just want to give you a little bit of my story. Uh, This is my first time sharing my story on stage, so I'm a little nervous. But I'm excited. I was just asked like seriously three minutes ago to share my story. So we'll see how this goes. (laughs) Um, 
So my name, like, like Ray said, my name is Keridan Roundy. I am from Wyoming. Is there anyone else from Wyoming here? Yeah! I was thinking, I'm like, I think I'm the only one that I've met from Wyoming. That's cool. I'm glad. <laughs> um, so prior to plugging into Danny Johnson and First Steps to Success, my husband and I were completely drowning in debt. We got this new job and we increased our income, so we increased our way of living, which is what, what happens. And we were young, we were just married, and we completely bought more than we needed. We bought a new house, we bought, we already had a truck loan, we bought a new car, we just, we lived to the max. And we started to, our marriage started to struggle. And we got to where all of our fights were about money constantly. And uh, my husband had a really good job, so we had plenty of money. That was not the issue, it was that we never kept any of it. We spent it on stuff we didn't need. So. Um, just a little bit of background, it's just my husband and I, we have no kids, and we bought a six bedroom house. <laughs> I know, well that's just, we, we had the money, the bank told us we had the money we could, so we did. And so obviously we spent the money to fill those rooms in that house <laughs> on stuff we didn't need. So um, anyways, we just, our marriage was failing. I mean, we were young, we just got married, and all of our fights were over stupid stuff that was unnecessary. And so, um, I remember one time, just like a, like a quick little look into what it was like, I remember one time sitting in front of our fireplace, our nice fireplace in our nice house, and we were fighting over how we were gonna pay for Christmas for our families. And that was the eye-opener for us, that something had to change. And so we made a decision and um, I started a business and that's what actually opened me up to DannyJohnson.com and to First Steps to Success. And so after coming out of First Steps to Success, we have now been able to pay off, this is crazy, we have now been able to pay off just over $300,000. <laughs> Which is completely crazy because we just thought debt was something that you live with. You know, you, you're always going to have a mortgage. You're always going to have a house payment, you know, car payments. That's just the way life goes. And little did we know that that's not the case. <laughs> um, so we now live in a smaller house. Uh, we love it. We actually, uh, I have less house to clean, which I'm good with. <laughs> and we live so much more simple. And our marriage is completely turned around. We no longer fight about money. We wonder what, where we're going to invest into next and how soon we're going to get you know, the mortgage paid off. And uh, that's exciting to us. So everything's just completely changed. And you know, the relationships that we've been able to, to grow with other people that are wondering what we're doing, that's been amazing. Because we've met so many great people. and. Learning what Danny is going to teach this afternoon has helped us grow to being people, 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 <laughs> more than anything. And that, like, we we hated people before, both of us. Like, we just we didn't, we never had those skills. And so, I'm really excited for this afternoon. This afternoon is going to be completely transforming to you. Um, as far as being, like she mentioned this morning, you know, like your business is people, your business isn't your product. And so. Um, with that being said, I just want to have you help me welcome back my mentor and America's favorite millionaire, Danny Johnson. <laughs> the way you look at things is about to change. And now back to the Danny Johnson Show. Okay, hey, we just turned down the chicken. Um, I mentioned in that first segment to cook that chicken at 500 degrees for an hour. No. <laughs> Sometimes I do do that, um, depending on what it is that I'm cooking, but, so I just turned it down. It's been in there for 31 minutes at 500 degrees in a convection bake, um, and now I just turned it down to 350 uh, because it's white rice. If it was brown rice, I would keep it at 500 and keep it going that long, but it's the white rice. It doesn't take as long to cook that white rice. We know the chicken's gonna be, um, Perfect, perfect, perfect mm -hmm. at 350 degrees. It smells 
smells so good. good. I can't wait to try this little experiment that we did. Amazing. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I wish you could smell what yes. we're smelling. Smell a vision. Yes. You need it. Smell it. Right, wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, that would actually cause people to cook more, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so we're we're talking about like the home duties. We're talking about cooking today. We're talking about women in their role as wife and mother, um, the caregiver of the home and what our society, I believe there's a lot of propaganda against the homemaker. I believe there's a lot of propaganda against the wife and I believe there's a lot of propaganda against the mother and why. I believe our nation has been weakened tremendously. I am so grateful for this young lady. This is Rachel, our daughter in love. If if you're just now joining us. and her and I were just sitting in the kitchen one day having a discussion about some things that she's seeing on social media and the kind of messaging that's coming across from um, from people in high places that are literally trying to make sure that the home is weak, absolutely weak. And I believe that wife's job is to help the home be strong. And it's really all about, about how we treat our husbands, how we treat our kids, the kind of examples that we set. And yet our whole society is so promoting us to get out of the home, to really not even be married, for us not even to be the mothers, to let the government or some daycare raise our kids instead of us being the ones to raise them. And I'm so grateful for this young lady because she came from a household. She uh, was raised by two parents who loved God, who loved her, who loved each other. They had their challenges like everybody else has their challenges of debt and marriage yeah. issues and work and all of that stuff. But her mom did a really phenomenal job of making sure she knew how to care for a home, to make sure that she knew how to cook, that she knew how to do dishes, and it created a love in her yeah. of being able to do those things. It was exactly what I prayed for for my sons, um, that my sons would have women that would honor and respect them, that they would have women that had a love for producing great meals um, because my sons were raised with these great meals. Um, they were. They were raised with, was that intimidating? Because you heard about the food in this house. A little bit. It, it was a worry, but I'm, I'm good. He brags. <laughs> he, my son brags about her cooking. You guys have been married for how many months? Uh, two two months they've been married and he's bragging about her cooking. <laughs> um, and I walked into their house, um, actually, and her house was clean. She did not know I was coming. She did not have time to tidy the place up to make sure that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to impress my mother-in-law. No, I mean, she had a clean home, which was really amazing. And that was actually the night of a major traumatic experience for a family member of mm -hmm. ours. They oh, were yeah, up all night and your house, yeah, yeah, your house was still like in beautiful order. You did Thanks. such a, you did such an amazing job. Okay. So anyway, so, uh, she was just talking about a home ec test that she took oh online, gosh. uh, yeah. and it came from the fifties. Explain what that is. This is again, just to show you the kind of propaganda that's been coming at the women of our society, this whole feminine yeah. feminist movement. What has been the result of that? Do you think perhaps there could be a connection between the depression rates in women and women working full time and sometimes overtime and then yeah. coming home and attempting to make it work with their kids. I know this, when I was working too many hours, I just wanted to be home with my kids. I felt bad about not being home. I wanted to always be a mom. And here I was den denying myself my own dream that my definition for success was being a mother. Now, then I would do that full time. I was like, I'm going crazy. Yeah. So, so I was like, let's readjust a little bit. Have I worked part time and then I was a mother full-time um, and that was my sweet spot so talk about this home ec test that you took and it came yeah. from the 50s well so it was you know an article online I can't remember the website that it was from but it was basically like can you pass this home economics t test or exam from 1950 and it had these I was like oh yeah like I think I can do this this is am sure, I, you were raised right, really well exactly exactly and so um I start taking this test and I'm just like I have no freaking clue what most of the stuff even is talking about. Because it was asking, you know, how do you, what order do you set the silverware in on the table for the dinner party? And, you know, what time should dinner be served every night? Like, it had all these preset, like, rules of what the standard operating procedure is for the household. And, mm -hmm. like... And it went beyond just the, the kitchen and dinner, too. And um, I can't remember most of it. It was a while ago. But I was so shocked that, like, there used to be. It was like a job. And you have to stay within these guidelines. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't. Psh. And you failed. I you failed. failed the I'm pretty sure I would fail that test, too. <laughs> I failed so bad. But, 
And yeah. we are two women that like take care of the home and we like mm -hmm. to cook and we do the laundry and we clean the house, right? Yeah. And yet we both would fail that, econo that home economics test. How interesting, right? What is happening in home economics classes today versus what it was 50 years ago? And really the question is, is it better today? I don't think it is. No. I don't think it is. I think that homes are messier today than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. I think that there was a time in our country where home was the home was in order yeah. and it was a peaceful place and and things were done and there was a schedule, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's how I raised my my kids was we were on a schedule. We had dinner every single night at 5:15. Yeah. That's just how it was. 5:15 dinner was served. Hans came out of his office and bam, we had dinner right at 5:15. That's just how we did it. Um, well. Dishes were done, Amazing. kids were in bed <laughs> at exactly eight o'clock sharp. They were in bed, lights were out, over. And that was me and mine and Hans's time um, in the evening. Or, or if there were two nights a week that he was working, then I was doing other things. Uh, in those evening time, whether it's catching up on whatever. But yeah, I think it's really interesting. So I see now, I just even know for me, right? So even when I was home taking care of um, my dad for the two weeks of his uh, knee recovery, I found myself, well, I was organizing a lot of things and, and, and things like that. But what I can say is that I found that, wow, when I'm not on a schedule, I don't do good for me. Same here. Really? Yeah. So I think that women, because again, I believe that there's so much propaganda that's been against the wife, against the mother, and against the homemaker, and how it's been subliminal. Because who gets all the attention are the successful business women. That's who gets all the attention, and or the celebrity women is who gets it. But no one gets to see behind the curtain for those women. To sit there and ask them, are you happy? Do you know your kids? <laughs> Do you know what your yeah. kids' interests are? Or did you tell them what their interests are and sign them up for piano? and ballet and all these other things that they don't want to do. Yeah. Right? Do you know what's going on at school with your kids? Do you know what they're battling against? It'd be interesting, mm -hmm. you know, to find out. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that too. And so I know that you plan it because I remember um, having a meeting with you. You've been with the company for how long? Uh, three and a half years. And I remember asking you, and this is before you and Roman were dating, um, where do you see yourself five years from now? Mm -hmm. Do you remember your answer? Yeah, my first answer was married. Yep. I want to be married. <laughs> yeah. And, and then? I think I said, I want to have a kid, too. I think that, no. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been five years that she, and this is about a, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So she successfully got married. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And they have a goal within five years that they would start having kids. Um, but you said that when you have kids, you kind of have a vision for that. Mm -hmm. Right? So explain what that looks like. Actually, we don't have time to explain what that looks like. Do that you actually <laughs> want to be home. Yeah. Yeah. You actually want to be home with your kids, which mm -hmm. is really amazing and unusual. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people just, they have foregone that um, beautiful responsibility. Yeah. But dream of being able to form the mind of a young person yeah. and prepare them for life. Yeah. yeah. We will continue here shortly with the Danny Johnson show. Listen, I would love to hear your comments. We both want to hear your input on this because this is just our thoughts, but we'd like to know yours. We'll continue with more right after this. Stay right here for more of the Danny Johnson show. I'm so blessed that I found what is in Grooming the Next Generation for Success. This is a book that is being taught in universities around the world. It's been noted as the best book on parenting that has ever been written. Crazy, if you ask me. But the point is, is that this thing gets results. Get your copy today, 888-757-8880. Again, that's 888-757-8880. Or go to dannyjohnson.com. That's D-A-N-I johnson.com. Get your copy today. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? 
This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider member today and get on the fast track to success. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880 for Time Secrets. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. So, women, you might be a husband. Your poor wife has been programmed to believe that she's nothing if she's a mother and a housewife. Um... She's been programmed to believe that she doesn't have a successful business, then she's nothing. But if she has a successful business or a successful career, then she's a whole lot of something. I don't know that I agree with this programming. In fact, I'm largely against it. But you had a question that day that we were sitting in the kitchen yeah. and we were talking about this very topic of, you know, is there a balance between the two? So I asked your question. Yeah, well, so it's, you know, there's the, it's, it's pitched like there's either one or the other. Like you can either be this high level, blah blah entrepreneur or whatever or you can be a full-time mom and housemaker and so it's like well the Proverbs 31 woman was both like she you know made clothes she woke up early to give food to the servants she you know bought vineyards and all so it's, it's both and so my question was just what's the balance between the two. Yeah, yeah. So not only the Proverbs 31 woman was a businesswoman, she was also a real estate investor. Yeah. <laughs> she was a fashion designer. She was, yeah. a, she was a number of things. And she also recruited a staff to help her do these things. And we see that inside of Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10 all the way to uh, verse 31. That passage actually inspired me 20 years ago because I was confused. I didn't yeah. know where my, where, what my role was in life, especially after Hans and I got married. I was really, really confused. Like, yeah. okay, I'm married now. Now what do I do? Even though I was a CEO and a founder of two companies prior to him and I getting together, yeah. I was like, now what? And I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna stop working and then, you know, just cook and clean for him all day. I had the worst, most horrible attitude. I was a terrible, evil, wicked wife. And then I met somebody that explained to me Proverbs 31. I was like, oh, okay. So wait a second, so I'm a wife, so there's a role as a wife yeah. and a mother and a caregiver and I can still be in business and there's no shame in that, but it's about finding the balance. Yeah. And so for me personally, the balance was 20 hours a week. Yeah. That was my balance. And, and initially it was days per week. So it was like, okay. I will work Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Those yeah. are my days. The kids were babies, so they weren't in school yet. So it didn't matter. Right. Right. So later on, it was Monday and Wednesday and Friday. Those were my work days. And I yeah. often worked around their nap schedule so that I had more so time much. with, yes. <laughs> so, and because again, I had everything scheduled all the time. Yeah. So then that made it simple. 
um, to work for three hours every afternoon to 12 to three, because they were in their bed from 12 to three every single day. Yeah. So, so yes, there is. It's, it's clearly something to balance and every woman is different. They have a different yeah. sweet spot for them and every woman needs to find what that sweet spot actually is. Yeah. So yes, you can do it. Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can. Yeah. And I think you're gonna be awesome at it. Okay, well, um, we really wanna hear your thoughts on this. Um, and if you wanna keep this discussion going, you can come over to Facebook, find our page. It's Facebook Live, um, sorry, Facebook.com, Danny Johnson Live. Johnson and that's Live. one N and an I, that's D-A-N-I Johnson Live. And by the way, if you found that this content was helpful or if you want some tips on being able to optimize your time, manage your time better at home as well as at work and define that balance, I wrote an entire system called Time Secrets. Very powerful. Get your hands on it immediately at DannyJohnson.com. Other than that, we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.